Praise the Lord, and thank you for joining me in the first of a multi-part lesson entitled Turned Unto Fables. To preface this, my pastor gave me the privilege of delivering this sermon to my church on December the 8th. I since have decided to extrapolate my sermon notes into incremental parts for this YouTube platform. We'll delve into the dangers of falsehood, false prophecy, false prophets, and false doctrine. This lesson is going to take us through the books of 2 Timothy, Thessalonians, John, Jeremiah, and Matthew, as all of these texts have something to say about lies the devil tells through people, like you or me, to trip us up in this race called life. Let me first stress the importance of understanding there is a battle going on for your soul. Both heaven and hell are pulling you to their gates, but they're also calling you. I talk a lot on this channel about voices, and that is because voices are very important in the spirit realm. Jesus Christ has anointed his pastor to persuade you of truth. Satan has deployed his false prophet to persuade you of lies. And this thought that spirits or voices are pulling, calling us to either gate, reminds us of gravity or the gravity a sun has on its planets. Before I get any further, let's go into scripture from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. I derived my lesson title from this scripture as it addresses the source of the struggle that I plan to talk about. In 2 Timothy, Paul the Apostle is telling his pupil that masses of Christians once believed in the truth, but have started turning unto fables. A fable is succinct, meaning that it is short, and it is fictitious, meaning that it simply isn't true. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that a fable is not the same thing as a parable. Whereas Jesus Christ used a parable to convey a godly moral through allegory, a fable is told to tell a moral that is similar to but may contend the biblical truth. Fables such as these are not to be trusted as supplement for scripture, and giving ear to these fables makes you and me vulnerable. Vulnerable to the traps of falsehood, such as false doctrine and false prophecy, that are so prevalent in our world today. Another important point about fables is that they are subvertive. They are designed to take our attention off reality. In cases of emotional stress, it is sometimes acceptable to immerse ourselves in fables as they can remedy or take our mind off the source of the stress. But in the spiritual case, fables are dangerous. Many are contrived to take our minds off of matters that are important to us as Christians, such as the need to pray, the need to repent, attend church, listen to our pastor, and of course, immerse ourselves in the truth. Satan himself is using fables to elicit rebellion among the flock. Pay attention. Paul, of course, described a falling away in 2 Thessalonians, citing that a son of perdition shall rise to profess himself as God, and many believers are going to forsake the true God for a false one. But even before that son of perdition comes, toting falsehood and false doctrine and prophecy, it is unfortunate to see our brothers and sisters be subverted by fables today and fall out of the truth. Let's go back to the planet metaphor from before. Part one of this lesson is entitled Rogue Planets. For just a moment, I'm going to talk about a theory astronomers have by the same name. Standard heliocentric theory tells us that around our sun, there are several planets that are in constant orbit. This means that they're circling the sun constantly and are pulled to it, closer to it, by its gravity. Think of Mars, Venus, Jupiter. All of these planets, including ours, are pulled closer to the sun by its gravity on a path called an orbit. But there are some planets, as astronomers suggest, that don't conform to any orbit. They're not attracted to any star. They're not tethered to any sun. They simply fly about in space, unattached and alone. Some of us have trouble pondering that, 
to think these planets obey no force or authority. It defies their understanding of gravity altogether. And yet, these planets once orbited a parent star, or so the theory tells us. But by gradual removal, or by sudden collision to another object, these planets fell out of orbit. Like a boulder, they flung or got catapulted into space. To put it simply, these planets become rejects, more harmful to others than themselves. It's a dangerous, yet very relevant, concept to us. They are at constant risk of colliding into other planets to knock them off of orbit and turn them into rogue planets too. This should remind you of Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. Jesus says to his disciples, Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Of course, you could use this to describe these planets that simply have no direction. Today I have described the rogue planet, but I have also described a person. You might be that person listening to me, or you might know that person. You used to orbit God, your son, but you kind of slipped off over time. You started praying less, attending church infrequently. At some point, you began to disobey and defy your pastor. The fact of the matter is that you slipped so far out of orbit, and perhaps another person collided into you and knocked you right out of church. Ultimately, you are a rogue planet, and you have turned unto fables. You are no longer subject to the truth, but are a student of lies. And if that is the case, then Paul has described you in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16 to 18. Returning to this epistle, Paul says, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat, as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Here Paul gives us two names, Hymenaeus and Philetus. They may not be your Sunday school names, but they are infamous in this passage as believers that turned backslider and became destructive to those still devout. This proves that rogue planets exist today, perhaps not in the astronomical context, but in the spiritual context they do. But there is still hope for the backslider. I'll tell you that I dedicated the first part of this lesson to telling you that unto every planet in this universe, there is a sun that is pulling you into his gravity, calling you using his voice. That sun is named Jesus Christ. Psalm 84, 11, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. Remember that to orbit God, you must consecrate every lap to Him. That means to dedicate every lap to Him. And every orbit you make around the sun should bring you closer to Him as He calls you closer. You might tell me, but David, I've been saved one time, I should be fine. My response to you is, be that as it may, you must be saved every day. It is part of God's grace and His plan for us to be renewed every morning. Some of us are in mode of slacking. We started doing less and less every day, or perhaps with less passion, and that is a common problem among Christians. But some of us are doing it more and beginning to embrace that spirit of slacking. You might tell me, but David, it is okay if I do more of this and less of that because God is still the center of my life. And I'll tell you, He may be, but every lap you're taking around Him only brings you farther from Him. And that's a dangerous place to be. That is a dangerous mindset to have. You must stay on the path He has put you on. You must be vigilant lest you fall out of orbit and become a rogue planet. There is still hope for you if you do become such. But if you ask me, I'd rather help people out of the dark than pull people into the dark. Time is of the essence, church. I'm not going to waste any time. None of us should. We must stay vigilant, stay sober, listen to the man of God, and stay on the orbit he has put us on.
The graces of God are for us to enjoy every day, lap after lap. The standard He commanded us to live by is to be kept at constant. It is my hope and prayer that every circle you trace around the sun only brings you closer to Him. Through prayer and fasting, it is my subsequent prayer that you become more aligned to His character and His plan for you. Finally, brethren and sisters, it is my hope that by the end of 2021, you are closer to God than the time it began. It's coming to a close. All of us should take the time to reflect on our orbit thus far. And if possible, in 2022, must aspire to become closer to God than ever before. Consider these points I have brought to the table and remember to endure sound doctrine. Thank you for listening to part one of my lesson entitled, Turned Unto Fables, and I am so excited and I anticipate you joining me for the next part of this lesson. Thank you very much.